Well, tonight I am so excited because um, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, Mike Todd is not just a world-renowned pastor, influencer, author, uh, but he's an incredible, incredible friend, father, husband. And uh, I think his life is a walking, talking message. And tonight we are so honored on this day, this special day, this day when he's releasing, I think, this book that's going to touch the world, that he'd be here with us in Miami, Florida. So wherever you're at, even if you're in your living room, can we just give honor where honor is due? Can you stand up on your feet with me? And can you welcome to the stage, come on, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, from Transformation Church, come on, Pastor Mike Todd, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. People in two years, y'all got me hyped. How you feel, man? Look at this guy. I can't even sit down. Miami, I love you. Boo Church, I love you. Transformation Nation, I love you. Let's give God one big shout of praise. Woo. I'm gonna sit. All right, we're gonna sit down. Everybody sit, sit down. down. We're just, I ain't been in front of people in two years, and so you get me in front. This is the first room, and then you gonna bring me to Voo Church, and it's gonna be a live room like this. Rich, there's grown people sitting in the aisles. Grown, like with I know, meals. I know. It, this is like, well, if you're gonna call it crazy in Miami, you can't just like say that. You gotta do that. You gotta you know do what I'm that. Saying? And uh, there's some grown people going loco in Miami tonight, and I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, we are uh, just so, so honored that you would make the trip, and thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy schedule. Um, I just think this is so cool. I mean, this is awesome. number one, what you're doing is so cool, but I just love that we get to do this together tonight, and I so love that you're giving me the opportunity to put you in the hot seat for a little bit. So, so the first thing everybody needs to know, like, me and DJ Richie Rich are friends' <laughs> friends. Like, we, we, we talk on random Mondays and Tuesdays for an hour and a half and, like, have to push meetings back because it's like I was talking to Pastor Rich, and then your team is like, oh, it must have been important. And I was like, no, nah, we was talking about our minivans and, <laughs> and, and, and our wives and all these different things. But um, the fact that you would allow uh, us, let me say it like this. Who you have as friends when you're believing God for crazy things is very important. Mm. Mm. And, I, and I know you haven't asked me a question yet, but you're one of those friends that make me believe. Mm -hmm. and, and when I called Rich, I'm going to tell you the real backstory. He's like, and we invited you and all this other stuff. I called him and I said, bro, my church is shut down. <laughs> I said, we can't do an event at our own church because the city won't let us and this and that, the third, the fourth. I was like, can I pull up? He said, pull up. <laughs> and I mean, Vu, can we give it up for the team? And yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> DC, Rick, Ali, everybody at Blue Church, at the other location, thank you. We love you. We love you. Is something wrong with his mic? Because I want to make sure. Um, we're we're going to send Oliver up here. What do, what's he going to do? I love this. Touch make, my make some noise for Oliver. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. Oliver is uh, two weeks married, Mike. Two weeks two married. Two weeks married. Yeah. He, uh, he, uh, he, he read relationship goals and finally got a, Come got on. a wife. He got a wife it out worked. of it. Got a wife out of it. It worked. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Uh-oh. This is, see, this is you. You, you, you went and you, you haven't been in front of people. Something's going on. It's that junk in the trunk. Check one, two. I think, yeah. Is that good? Wh whatever, whatever. Check one, two. Do I need a handheld, too? Check one, two. Check, check. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. All right, we're good. Um, so I was, I was thinking, like, there's so much to talk about, and I've got, I'm excited to chat for a little bit, but just for a moment, like, when did you and me first meet? Like, I, I'm trying to think, like, because there's kind of, like, some funny stories, I yeah. feel like, with that that you told me one time that I don't know if everyone would okay. know. So um, I was a youth pastor 
Um, and that was an accident. Like it was a complete like fluke how that happened. And we were having uh, our first youth conference and it was called Culture Shock in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Shout out to So Fly, sold out y Free Life Youth. That was the name of our youth group. And yes, our mascot was a fly, but it was tight at the time. <laughs> now a little unsanitary and you know what I'm saying? A little gross, but uh, we invited- So like what year would this be? So you're, you're, you're like, running a youth ministry called we, So Fly. 2012? 2012, 2012. Your church is called So Fly. So Fly. No, the, <laughs> Voo, don't act like that's true, regular. True, 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 Please true, don't act like true. rendezvous yeah. and you just take off the whole first half of the word and you just make up something. Voo church, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> So our youth and young adult service was called So Fly. Fire. And, uh, <laughs> and we invited uh, Pastor Rich to come and speak. And he said, yeah. And then at the last minute, you had to cancel. See, yeah. I don't believe that. I've yeah. heard you say this. Yeah, I like name this. on flyer, like that Stop. pretty, like everything. And it was like, he ain't coming. Stop. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And so at the, at the last minute, we had to find somebody else. And oh I want to thank you because that's how I met our oversight pastor now, Tim Ross. And Tim Ross actually came and spoke. And that's where we met. And then we met probably three or four years later yes. at, in Dallas at Ed Young's church. Yes. And you preached and you were headed on a private jet out uh, somewhere. I'm Not just true. <laughs> I'm just playing. But I ran up and I was like, bro, we're brothers and we've never met. And uh, you got out the car and we hugged. And from that moment, it was like, I found somebody that's going to be my friend. And uh, I, think, I think maybe five months later, your pastor was having a conference and he just invited me to the conference, not as a speaker. He said, I just want you to be here. I just feel like you being around is beneficial. And nobody knew who Mike Todd was at that time. It wasn't like a, a thing yet. And you came and you, you, you acted like we were important before we had a platform. Mm. And again, if you don't have people in your life who value the potential on the inside of you, it will be very difficult mm. for when God elevates you for them to celebrate. And um, you celebrated before there was anything to celebrate. And me and Nat came and spent the whole weekend uh, with you guys. And uh, then that next year would be my first time speaking at VU Conference. And uh, the rest was history. And, and we are living in the aftermath of that. That was an amazing, amazing time with you. I was just, no, I was just thinking on the way over here today because for me, I, I feel like the first time I saw Mike Todd was somehow like a clip of some sort. And I so loved, I mean, there's so many clips going around and God bless, I, that's awesome. But I, I remember the content of what you were sharing, it so moved me and impacted me that like, I immediately like, like clicked on the thing, like who is this guy, where is this place? And it's like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'm like looking at stuff, and I'm like, yo, this is like Tulsa, but like there's a vibe coming from Tulsa, and the only person I know in Tulsa is a mutual friend of ours named Paul Dougherty, and so I call Paul, I'm like, yo, who is Mike? And he like gave me your number, but then I thought it was gonna be weird if I text you, not like, hey man, I'm, I like you. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and so I held the number, but I knew I was supposed to reach out to you. And then somehow we met in Dallas. And so I remember that day seeing you and it totally, we, I got out of the car and we hugged. But I, I remember it being a very, very important moment for me going, that's somebody that I need in my life. I had no idea uh, the, what was going to happen in your life and the way that God was going to use you, but the way that you were going to steward that, the way that you were going to handle that, the way you continue to handle that with such grace and ease. And it's, it's been a great joy of my life getting to call you a friend. And so oh, I love you. Um, I love you. I, I want to start there a little bit because, you know, like so much has transpired in your, ha in your, in your life over the last five years, but I think it's fun for those of us here in the room tonight, those watching on YouTube, to like kind of go back to those early days because today we, we heard the news this week and we're gonna chat about it. I mean, you know, Transformation Towers and the arena and, and, and yeah, come on, we can thank God. This is, these are great miracles. But I think the things that I always get really interested in is like, is like the, the guy before the miracle. Yeah. 
you know, like, like the man before the moment, like what was he doing and who was he? And so I just love going all the way back to that moment because people see you today and it's like, oh, that's easy for Mike. Because I mean, like everything he touches, it's like, it feels like it's blessed and it's awesome. But crazy faith doesn't start there. Crazy faith starts in the shadows and crazy faith starts in these seed formats. And so I, I want to get into that a little bit, but let, let's just begin with this, this whole idea of crazy faith and really kind of big picture idea of what this message means to you. So for me, it's my life message. Um, I can see as I trace back over my life moments where God was putting me in a situation not to harm me, to grow me. Mm. And perspective is so important because many times when we get in situations that are uncomfortable, we feel like God has forsaken us or maybe we did something wrong or was it the sin or was it the, 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 the thing that I, I miss God on? But many times it's preparation for something that God has in your future. So I go all the way back to, to middle school when I just started saying this thing over myself every day that I'm in God's special favor club. Mm. I'm in seventh grade, Rich, and I would drive up to school. I said, I have favor with every janitor, with every lunch lady, with every student of every race. I'm in God's special favor club. And my dad would laugh at me and be like, you're in God's special favor club, son. But my parents are people of faith. And I don't know where that came from. Yeah. You know, the Bible talks about people having a measure of faith. And I feel like God gives every person a measure of faith. But how much happens with that measure of faith is how much you work it. And, and, and see, a lot of people, they have a little bit of faith, but they won't work it. They're scared of what people will think. I'm in a Lincoln Town car with my grown father in the back of the car saying, I'm in God's special favor club. And that sounds crazy today. But when I tell you, as I begin to start saying those things, I would watch how God would open doors in middle school for me to to walk into rooms and be in situations and be chosen for things that had nothing to do with my academics, had nothing to do with my skin color, had nothing to do with my pedigree. It was something that I tapped into that felt like was available for everybody, but somebody had to claim it. And I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I feel like there's something available for every person that believes in Jesus. But if you don't claim it, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't put your hand on the promises of God. And I just started doing that. And I saw Rich through high school. I, I, some of my friends that went to high school with me are in the building right now. One of them was on the platform um, and uh, he would be in a math class with me and I would draw these pictures that I saw of things that I believe God wanted me to have. I'm in ninth grade in what was the class, Aaron? M math of finance. I don't even know what that is. Me neither. M math or science. I don't know. He got held back a few times, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It was one of them. Math to finance. I'm like, I think, what it, was math, I think there, it was bro. math to finance. I was in this class, and I was a drummer um, from young age. Mm. And my parents always encouraged my faith. I have to talk about the faith heroes yes. that are here today because many times we thank God for Abraham and Noah and Paul, yep. but there are people right around us every day that will end up in the hall of faith. Some of them, you need to look at your neighbor and say, is it you? Because at the end of the day, yeah, look at the other neighbor and say, is it you? Yeah, yeah. Because God's greatest work of faith in the earth was not when... Um, um, Moses and Abraham and Noah was rocking on the earth. Mm. He said greater works. Yep. He wants something to happen in 2021. There's 102 days left in this year. And I don't know what could happen if we would start believing God in faith. So I was believing in faith. And so I wanted this drum set. It was a custom made drum set that, that cost $8,000 and I was 17 years old. Now, most 17 year olds want a car, but I wanted something that I thought aligned with my purpose. Mm. And again, I wanna, I wanna throw this in here because we're not talking about wishing. Good. We're not talking about asking God for random things you see 
on Instagram to compare so that the insecurity on the inside of you that really needs to be dealt with with prayer and counseling could... Okay, let me stop because some of y'all are getting a little uncomfortable. I'm not talking about flexing. I'm talking about things that align with the yep. purpose that God has for your life. And I felt like part of my calling was to reach people through music. And so I needed uh, an excellent instrument to be able to produce that. And so I started believing God for this drum set. And so I started drawing it because I had no money. I had no resources. But somewhere in the Bible, I read that you were supposed to write the vision down yep. and make it plain. Now, I could have wrote. Nice drum set. But that wouldn't have been my best effort. And a lot of times we bring God our scraps looking for miracles. We bring him our leftovers looking for something that's extravagant. And, and I, I, I told God that if he gave me anything, I saw the vision of this drum set, I would give him my best. And the best that I had was to draw it to the best of my abilities. Now, let me admit to you, I can't draw. So I had protractors. No. Come on now. I had protractors. Never used them for math, but I used them for drawing. I had rulers. I had all of this stuff. And my, my, my classmates would laugh at me as I would sit there and shade and erase and shade and erase and, and, and try to get it right and ask for help and all this other stuff till I got that picture to the best of my abilities. And you remember those, what they used to call trapper keepers oh, or yeah. trappers? And they had, some of y'all too young, it's like, no, I know iPads and <laughs> cell phones. Like, well, before we could carry phones in school, um, they had trappers and I got one that was clear. Fire. So that I could put the picture in the front of it. That was and the for move. my entire ninth grade year, I walked around with that picture in the front of my, every time I opened my, I was getting a vision. I had to see it before I saw it. And that's, that's, the, that's the message that I'm trying to get people to. It was crazy for me to spend that much time writing that down. It was crazy for me to continue to do it when people were laughing at me. It was crazy to know that I didn't even have a bank account at that time and that I was telling my mother and my father that some way God is going to provide at, in ninth grade $8,000 for me to get this one-of-a-kind custom drum set. But it's only crazy. The end of my ninth grade year. My dad says, come on, we're going somewhere. And I said, where are we going? He said, um, I asked you at the beginning of this process to believe God in faith and do everything that you could to, to get resources. And so I was saving. I was mowing lines. I was asking people. I, 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 I gave people my vision plan. This was my first pastoring. I was at the lunch table like, listen, guys, I know you don't play drums or music. But if you give me that dollar, you were about to get that fruitopia. Y'all know nothing about fruitopia. But... <laughs> If you give me that, God's going to do something to me. I was like, just doing that. And I raised about $2,000. Just working my faith. Just, just working what I had. My dad put me in the car. Unbeknownst to me, the whole time he saw what I was doing, God provided for my family in a way in that season that they had never had. And the faith that I had as a, a ninth grader sparked something in my dad to where he had already called the guy, had him start making the drum set. He told me to get in the car. We drove to Kansas City, Missouri, drove up to this warehouse, and I got out the warehouse, and there was a nine-piece custom gold rim drum set sitting there with my name on every number etched on the thing. I began to cry, and my dad said, my dad said, your faith produced this, son. And some of y'all are thinking right there, you're like, no, your mom and dad produced that. They didn't have the resources. God used them as a resource, but he was the source. And there's so many people looking at something as the source, but we only have one source. He can do it through my job. He can do it through a tax refund. He, he can do it through my neighbor. He can do it through whatever means, but I have the source. Amen. And Rich, that's, that's where I made a decision that I'll never not trust God again. Because 
there was no way. It was completely crazy for me to be doing that. But I said, if God could do this over something inconsequential, over wood and metal, what could God do if I believed him for the things he talked about in the Bible? What would happen if I believed him for generational wealth? Because the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his, his children. How, how can I do that? And I'm always needing a handout. How, where are these witty inventions ideas that he says that he'll give? That, that, that maybe I could be one to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Like maybe, and I know the church doesn't believe that because what we really want is something cute and predictable. Mm. Which is the antithesis of faith. Mm. A lot of people say that the opposite of faith is fear, but it's actually certainty. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. if I'm certain, I don't need faith. Wow, very good. But where there's some gray or where there's some areas that I don't know, that's where I tell my church, I said, faith begins where understanding ends. Yep. If you can figure it out, you don't need faith. But at the moment it don't make sense, that's where faith shows up on the scene. And God likes working where there seems to be no way. I've seen him be able to make a, rip, or a highway where there was an ocean. I'm preaching, I'm sorry. But somebody that's in the room or on the chat has to know that we serve a way making God. Somebody shout way maker. Woo! This is, uh, this is what happens when you take a three month sabbatical. You get Woo! rested, you get recharged and you have something to pour out. So many things that I think that you have like genius level uh, ideas on and so many areas of your life that uh, the closer I get to you that I'm like, I just think you're brilliant, brilliant. One of the areas I think that you're brilliant in is like, is connecting dots and bringing language to things. Try to remember, and maybe you've had it for a long time, wh when did you get this phrase, crazy faith? And, and, and beyond that, I feel like you do this a lot and it, and it helps become anthems in people's lives. I, I'll be out at my church and we'll, we'll be studying something, I'll walk out and I'll be talking in a, courtyard. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're believing it. Well, Pastor Rich, <laughs> you know, it's, it's only crazy until it happens. I'm like, yeah, thank you. You know, like I'm getting pastored out in the courtyard. Um, but what I've, what I've watched is, is a master, you take the gifts that God's given them and then package it in language that everyday people walk into their office spaces. They walk into their schools, universities. Maybe just give us some of like the origin story, like we're hearing about the drum set. We're going back to So Fly a little bit, but like this, the phrasing, honestly, it's, it's, I, I'm really, really curious about it. So um, this series came off a of sabbatical um, and anything I've ever done that God has really used came when I spent time with him. It came in the margin. And I'm gonna say this for everybody because we live in a hustle and a grind culture. Um, when you're trying to get it, it doesn't come. Good. But when you make space for him, it always comes. And so I took a month off and I was, I was just studying and I knew that I needed to do something on faith because our church was in a place where we were believing God for another building. We were, um, our church, if you don't know the story, we were in a converted grocery store in the hood of Tulsa. Um, and, and literally there was no grocery stores around. We were in a food desert. There is literally was just a building. Um, and um, we went from one service to five services in one year. And I was, they were about, they were trying to kill me. <laughs> and, um, and, and I was like, God, we got to do something. And 37 days after I became the lead pastor of Transformation Church, in my time of being quiet with the Lord, I was in my daughter Bella's room. She's here. My, the whole Todd squad is here tonight. My whole family. I love y'all. It's my baby. <laughs> it took crazy faith for us all to get on a plane and get here today. Um, but I was in her room, she was just maybe a few months old, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, he said, write this down. I pulled my laptop up, and now I'm used to hearing this voice because I practice it from seventh grade. Mm -hmm. 
A lot of people's like, I, I don't know if I hear God, it, it's familiarity. You'll start Very learning good. as you make the Very time good. for it. Very good. And, um, and, and so, so write this down. I pulled my laptop out. And the first thing I wrote down is the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. 37 days after being a pastor, we had no money in the bank, had 300 people literally voting every Sunday if they were going to come back the next Sunday. Because who is this wild little black kid that's up here telling us to believe God and all this other stuff? And he going to spend $80,000 on camera. We're gone, Susan. And like they like they dipped out on us like it was crazy. But God told me, he said, I want you to believe me. And I begin to write this down with about 11 other things. And it was March uh, 9th, 2015, 7.29 a.m., Bella's room. I had the presence of mind to mark the moment. And, and, and I think that did something to the story because a lot of times we're like, God told me something, God told me something. Mm. But it becomes a testimony when you mark the moment. Very good. Some of y'all, when you broke up with that person, you needed to mark that moment. Because that's the best thing that never happened to you. Some of you, oh, uh, y'all missed it. Some of you, when you got the denial for that college, you needed to mark that moment because God was redirecting you to a place where purpose was actually about to happen. And for some reason, I marked that moment, Rich. And when I marked that moment, five years later, I'm getting to your question, I promise you. I was at a place where my faith was like, God, you got to do something that's going to prove that you're good, you're big, and you are not to be messed with. And now, I know everybody doesn't have a relationship with God like that um, because you just, want, you just want his saving grace. Mm, talk about it. You, you just flirt with sin so much, you're like, is this over the line? Is this over the line? Can I do this? Can I not do this? That's the bare minimum of the life that God called us to live. I, and, and I'm saying that because crazy faith happens when you get into the deeper things of your relationship with God. I don't want to stay at the starting line for, for 20 years talking about, I want to see your power. I want to, I, either this is real or it's not. Either, either you're going to be a big God or I'm about to do something else. And God was like, you testing me. And, and, and what ended up happening is when I was at the moment of my stress, God said, I already gave you the vision for what you need to do about the church. And I was like, I don't remember. I forgot that I wrote that down because it had taken so long. Because the process didn't happen like write it down, go to sleep, new building. But I was learning in that time the principle that is in the earth of seed. Yep time and then harvest no farmer goes to the right. land puts the seed down puts water on it and be like y'all just get us about 15 minutes because we about to see a harvest he knows the seed is planted but then there is time and, and, and that's why in the book i put a whole chapter called waiting faith very good because I think it's not that the promise is not coming to pass. I think that we get tired of the wait. And more than it's yep. like, oh, God, I'm waiting. It should be I'm waiting at your service, God. Yep. What do you need me to do? Who do you need me to serve? Very good. And I forgot about it. I literally one night in prayer, um, God said, go back and check two hard drives ago. I go back and start checking vision. I just type in the word vision to my hard drives. This paper pops up from five years earlier. And God said, there it is. I said, this is it. I go to my team and my staff. I said, y'all, we're believing God for the Spirit Bank Event Center. We're going to do this. And this is when crazy faith came to me because I, I, I'm, I'm an extremist. Like, uh, I, I can't be like, we're just going to believe God in faith because that seemed weak at that moment because I knew this wasn't going to happen. If, if we just came with it at a mediocre kind of like maybe if it happens, if it doesn't. And it just came out of me. I was like, we're going to believe God in crazy faith. And my team was like, Pastor. And something birthed on the inside of me that day. And I went 
to the people and I said, find us out if this building is available. And these people came back and said, it's unavailable. I said, God, I thought you said this was it. He said, you thought a closed door meant no? There you go. See, some of us are looking at obstacles as the thing that are to make us stop. They are the thing to make us believe. He said, this is the thing that if you even had the faith as big as a mustard seed, you can look at this uh, 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 mountain and tell it to be cast into the sea. And the obstacle becomes your testimony if you would stay in faith. And so we started staying in faith with that thing. And I said, we're going to get this building. And they was like, it's not available. Next week, hey, is anything happened? It's not available. Hey, building, it's not available. And to the point where I started getting discouraged. See, nobody talks about, they just want to shout on top of the building and say, I got the keys, the keys. But there was a time when I was about to quit, to quit, to quit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. And when I was about to quit, we started looking at other buildings. And my team one day came and they was like, well, we found this Kmart building that's, that just shut down and all this other stuff. And I was like, all right, I'll go look at it. Be careful what you entertain when God's already given you a promise. Some of y'all need to delete some people's numbers right now. Yeah. Be careful what you entertain when God's already given you a promise. We walk in that Kmart and there's poles all throughout the entire facility. And I knew what God showed me was something where we could do state-of-the-art video and all this other stuff. And I said, this ain't it. No poles. I said, we're not settling for polls. We're not. <laughs> and I told the team, we're not buying this Kmart. So they started looking for other places. And this is what happened, Richie. We went to some other building that was nicer with no polls. And uh, I hate polls too. I hate polls too, bro. <laughs> and the realtor said, how's it going? And something rose up in me. I said, do you really want to know how I feel? And that man looked at me and said, sure. <laughs> I happened to be carrying the promise with me at all times. Come on. I had that paper printed out and I pulled it out of my wallet. I said, this is what God promised me. I said, I don't want to see another building until this is available. I said, God told me. And I walked him through it. I said, it would be state of the art. And somebody was going to underwrite the whole thing. I just got gangster on him. I said, listen here, Bill. <laughs> this is the building God promised me. And I was so... <laughs> I was so filled with faith and conviction that that man called those people every week until they were about to sell the building. At the closing table, I love God, with another company. Ten minutes into the closing, the funding falls through. Oh, because Bill called every week while in the closing room with somebody else. He picked up the phone, called our real estate person and said the funding just fell through. The building somehow is available. Are y'all still interested in it? What we thought was a setback was a setup. We didn't have the money when I first knew we were supposed to get it, but we were stacking them coins in preparation for the promise. We got that call on a Tuesday. We put down the earnest money on a Wednesday. The company was a big entertainment company and had deep pockets, came back with the funding on Friday, but they couldn't get it because God's child already had it. Don't tell me what God won't shut down to fulfill his promise to you. Go. So that's kind of how crazy faith uh, came about. So, so much has happened since the series began. Um, how, how many weeks did you go? 20. Yeah, 20 weeks. 
Did it ever get hard? Crazy till Christmas. Did it ever get hard, like, coming up with? Um, uh-uh. Okay. I, I mean, Charlie will tell. I, I sermon prep with uh, my right-hand man, Charles Metcalf, and uh, that's my guy. And he can tell you. what Ch- Charlie, we had about 30 titles. I could have done that whole series for a year and a half. Mm. I mean, it was, this is how I knew it was my life message. It was my overflow. I wasn't, I wasn't at the bottom of the bucket trying to figure out, like, what am I going to say to somebody? It was like, and this is how you know God's purposed you to speak on something or to go into something. It's like that one topic, when they bring it up, it just flows out of you. And, and, and it's like that thing. And God's saying, hone into that. Let me speak into that. And I would just go into prayer and ask God, what does he want to show? And he was just showing me thing after thing. He said, I want you to shake people out of lazy faith. Come on. It's not that they don't have faith. It's just it's lazy. It's so sluggish. It's like if it's, if it's, if it's hard or uncomfortable, then maybe it wasn't God. Mm. Mm. But when I read about the children of Israel, God taking them on purpose, yeah. the long route, because if he would have took the shortcut, they wouldn't have been able to handle it. He takes them the long way, and it was supposed to be an 11-day journey, but because they were lazy in their language, lazy in their living, lazy about their leadership, they turned an 11-day journey into a 40-year death. And God had to wait for their kids to be born Mm. to fulfill the promise. Let it not be said of us. Yeah, good that God would have to do it with our children because our faith was too lazy to believe him. Mm. But even when their children went into the land to possess it, there were still giants there. It's yours, but now you got to stand up and take it. And many of us, God has given us things that he told us, this is yours. Your family will be saved. Your business will be successful. I knew the pandemic was coming, but I'm bigger. Then, uh, I'm bigger than anything that happened. But now you hit this thing and you don't want to fight. You don't want to stand and let me. And, and, and that's what my burden is. I told the team, I want to be everybody's crazy faith coach because I've seen the giants in the land. And I've watched them fall. Rich, I'm a black dude in North Tulsa that's 30 years old at the time all of this is happening. One of the worst race riots in our nation's history happened there in 1921, um, the race massacre on Black Wall Street. There is a division in our city of the haves and have nots, and a lot of it is color based. Mm. For me to go into the city of Bixby, Oklahoma, you can tell it's racist. Just no, I'm just playing. But for me, can I tell the truth? Yes, talk about it. For me to go into Bixby, Oklahoma, Mm. And look at a building that they built for $54 million. And walk in there and say, the kingdom of God is going to own this. We're going to have church here every Sunday. And we not turning the music down. And I'm going to wear J's and a tank top and preach to every. I don't got to become a different version of who God created me to be to walk in the promise that God called me to walk into? When we did this, partnering with God, partnering with God, partnering with God, I got to keep saying that because our generation likes to do things and ask God to co-sign it. I'm moving to L.A., I, there's just better opportunities out there. I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Come on. Come on. Come on. God will bring water out of a rock. Yep. Don't, don't move. Don't go. Everybody talks about 
crazy faith. And a lot of times our generation talks about it when it's leaving. Like I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my job and I'm taking crazy faith and I'm starting this over, over here, over there. I'm moving to yep. New York. I'm yep. doing this stuff. And that's what we are because it looks good for the gram. Do you know it takes crazier faith to stay? Right. Oh, y'all missed it. Some of the biggest faith step you can take is to stay right where you are and say, God, make a way out of this situation. God, I'm not going to run from it. I'm not going to change directions. I'm not going to move out of ambition. I'm going to stay right where you planted me. And we're going to watch you do a miracle right here. Somebody shout at me right here. It's fire. Um... I think for a moment, a word there that you said that I think I want to lean into it for a moment. Once again, I think people watch and I don't think it's you're doing. I just think people, they develop their own narratives and they see things just from an Instagram, you know, filter and just an image and just a, a YouTube video. I have the privilege of getting to be a little bit closer than most to you. What I love about Mike, I was talking to Robert Mudu the other day, a good friend, a mutual friend of ours. And uh, they planted a church in Dallas. It's going incredible. We love you, Social Dallas. And he was talking about you. And we were just talking about, like, man, yo, Mike's different, bro. He's like, I know. He's like, we're meeting in Gillies right now. And he got up in my face and said, Robert, you're going to own Gillies. Have you went and talked to the manager yet? And Robert's like, I don't know how to do that. You know, like, <laughs> and we were laughing because this isn't something that you, you preach. This is something you live. This is something you live. And, and, and that's why it is so potent. And that's why it ministers us ministers to us so deeply. But once again, we watch and we see the blessing. But with every blessing, there is great, great burden. Talk for a moment, if you can, just from a vulnerable place with all of the blessing that's hitting your life. Dude, I mean, you bought an arena. You just announced this week, Transformation Towers. Um, they also just welcomed a brand new child into their home. Come on. I mean, this is Gia Joy is here. My baby's here. You have an amazing wife and the staff and team is growing. Um, we see your hand on leaders that are being released and empowered. Uh, there's just still so much more to come for transformation. But with that great blessing, there is a burden that I don't think the world gets to hear much about. And I'm not, I know that you wanna celebrate and give glory to God, but I think it's important if you're comfortable. This past year, what has been some of the burdens that you've had to carry that maybe others are unaware of? So, so people talk about um, the trauma of not having things, the trauma of poverty, the trauma of, of being violated. Nobody talks about the trauma of success. It's, it's rarely talked about because um, people want everybody to feel like it's, it was easy and somehow it's easy to sustain. Well, 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 let me be very clear with you. What God has done has made me more dependent on him than I've ever been in my entire life. Um, I'm gonna share hot at TC, we call it humble, open, and transparent. Um, at the time that relationship goals goes viral, at the time that the church goes from one service to five services, at the time that everything that, I, that metrically could be going right for me and I'm coming, I preach, preach at, VU conference and I preach at Elevation Church and I preach at, like all of these things happen. Me and my wife get a phone call that our son MJ, who's sitting on the front row right now, that he had autism. And the, the, the things that he used to do and say, he's not saying anymore and doing. And that we need to get him in occupational therapy and we need to change his diet and we need to get all this stuff. And I'm like, hold on. What do, you, what do you mean? Okay, yeah, he has autism. He's healed in the name of Jesus. Like, let's keep moving. Let's go. But I said that, but it got worse. And, and, and we're walking and people are lined up on the highway to come to church. And, but on Monday, I have to take them to therapy. And I'm sitting here in the greatest tension of my life. Mm, mm that God makes me the crazy faith guy, but then puts a situation that means more to me than anything I've ever done in my home. And says, I want you to believe me here. 
So when I get up and I say crazy faith and I'm talking about believing God, mm. there's a layer I have to press through to even say it at a low level to help anybody believe. Mm. Because maybe right before I got on that platform, I had to clean my son up because he's not potty trained yet. He's about to be six years old. Mm. And when, when, can I be for real? Yeah. I didn't want to write this book. Because I wanted to write this book when MJ was healed. The end of this story is supposed to be, I told you all of this. Yeah, yeah. And now my son is. Yeah. And God said, Michael, I need somebody to be authentic mm. enough to share the middle of the miracle. Yeah. So when I'm telling you God is good, I'm telling you he's good through my pain. I'm telling you he's good through my disappointment. I'm telling you he's good with tears in my eyes. I'm telling you he's good on the way to therapy. I'm telling you he's good even when we get a bad report. He's still good. Mm. Mm. So in this book, this book is dedicated to my son MJ. I'm going to read it to you real quick. This is my crazy faith. To my only son, Michael Alexander Todd Jr., you have given daddy a reason to believe God in crazy faith that goes beyond my ability to express in words. And I can't wait for us to have a conversation one day about how God did this miracle. It's only crazy until it happens. Well, we are believing with you, and I think that it takes a whole lot of strength to testify, not from the mountaintop, but from the valley. That's really where faith rings loud and clear, and we are believing that we're going to see that boy completely healed, and we're all going to remember this moment right here, this night, when you were testifying it and celebrating it. Amen. Um, all that's happened at Transformation, it, it, it takes two to tango, and um, it has not just been the story of Mike Todd's faith, but um, there, is a, there is a special partner that I love very, very much, and I'm hoping that she's going to allow me to, 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 to can, can I invite her up, Natalie? Is there any chance that we can get, come on, can we get Pastor Natalie Todd? Come on up here, baby mama. Make some noise. Come on, make some noise. Pastor Natalie Todd coming to the stage. My God! Come on, I love you so much. So, let me just ask the question I think everyone's wondering. Um, what's it like being married to this crazy man? Um, how do you, how do you, how does this work? I, I'm, I'm just curious these ideas and this like it keeps me on my toes let's talk sure. about it um i don't talk I, sweet <laughs> what you mean talk sweet i am sweet um no he has been like like he said he talked about the story about the drums and so since i've known him since i've been 14 he um has had this crazy like it's crazy, it keeps popping up for some reason, it's the book. But any, like anything that he wanted to go for, especially, mm. I don't know, how do I wanna say this? Women, it's like so important that you find a man that really wants to please God. Cause it's not that he just wanted things. Cause it, you can find someone that's like, Man, baby, we're going to go around the world. We're going to have this house and the cars and da da But at the end of the day, I knew his, his purpose was always to impact the world for God. 
whether it was through music, it was not going to be through church. I mean, he may have done some gospel things, but that wasn't necessarily the, the dream. And so, but he always talked about his intent was to bless the church, Big C. And, um, and so seeing that, that was just another level. That's what attracted to it him to me the most is because I'd never seen yeah. anyone like that. I never seen anyone talk like that, believe like that. Um, it was literally like, it was literally like God's favor. It was like a magnet on him. And I don't want to make it seem like he's just the only, the only person in the world that this can happen through, but it became, became like an inspiration. Mm. I think even to, to me, yeah. you know, to see, cause I come from like a very small little town, like, I'm, um, you may know what a reservation is. I don't know. I'm half Indian, half black. Okay. So my family's from Anadarko, Oklahoma, very small. And uh, people say it's res life or whatever, but reservation. Wow. It's not a reservation, but people think it is. All that to say, very small, a lot of domestic abuse, a lot of drug abuse, alcohol abuse. So I didn't grow up seeing a lot of what he has seen in his life or the, the level of faith that he has. I just didn't grow up that way. <clears throat> and so... When I met him and I started seeing like the things that he's believing for and then we grow up and you know, we're getting married and we have kids and even to this day, even when he just talked about our son, you know, being hot, like that type of faith, it inspires me so much in women. That's why I say it's so important to have someone in your life that wants to yeah. please Jesus, like because... When things happen in our lives and we're, and we're not anchored fully or we need someone to be able to, to lean on and go through the waves with, it's just so important. And so, I mean, being married to someone like this, it is, it is wild. It is, keeps you on your toes. It, um, it is actually, it's fun. It's stretching. I believe it does come with a lot of uh, comes with its own level of burden as well. Because sure. you because the enemy's gonna try to attack. I mean, if you're out here trying to do these miraculous, you know, things for the Lord and that you're believing for for your purpose to help, you know, God's God's name get spread across the world, God, you know, the enemy doesn't want that. So there are there are things that will come, but me and him are so unified and another thing I'm just, is this just brag on michael's what's this turning into you girl you? do your thing <laughs> ain't nobody stopping you but um the other part when he said crazy it's not just crazy faith for materialistic stuff because that's what i, I don't want to get it to this is name it and claim it thing or whatever that's not what this is it's not just trendy church like i'm just i want a man so i'm about to get a man it's not it's not just that i want a car so i'm gonna get a car um but I've seen him also have crazy faith to change his desires. Desires that maybe are off from what God's is. Maybe just even his preferences. Like, I am way more introverted than my husband. But I've seen him literally go to God with that same energy of crazy faith and be like, Lord, work, work on me. Nat, I don't know how. We're, I'm about to switch it up or whatever with, with our lives, like how our pace of what we're going or whatever. I've seen him really go after God to work on his heart for just his pace wow. of life and, um, and get accountability and, and do things. This man, I just want to brag on you. I love you. Girl, you about to get another kid. <laughs> no, I don't want none of those. I don't want any of those. <laughs> You talking too nice out here. Where are we at, Miami? But, Can somebody watch the kids tonight? <laughs> but, you know, even in crazy faith, we have claimed that we wanted, you know, our marriage to be an example. We want it to be real, to be authentic, like to be, to be deep, to be rooted, and, and um, to, you know, our cup to be full. His cup to be full and my cup to be full as well. And so um, even in that, and, and he also wants to be healthy, you know, like a healthy pastor. What is that? You know, so um, talking about Sabbath, we have, you know, one of our best friends, Godmom to our, our children, talks about the Sabbath. She swears by this thing. And my husband, you can only imagine Mr. Crazy Faith here, a day of complete rest, like you don't do anything. He went and got a flip phone, like 
over this sabbatical. So on a certain day of the week, mm. he has this flip phone so he cannot be on social media, mm. so that he cannot get phone calls from anyone except like four people or whatever. And so that he can be present with, with me, present with God, and so he can spend time with God, so he can spend time with me and his family. And that to me speaks to crazy faith. I mean, the buildings, the everything, but that same energy is used towards family. It's used towards the, the inner is what I'm trying to Absolutely. say. You know what I mean? And so being married to someone like this, it's a joy. It's, it is a ride. It is, um, it's crazy. Yeah, in a good way, in a good way. Maybe just talk about, yeah, come on, give him a round of applause. Beautiful. Maybe, maybe just talk from your perspective for a moment, Mike, because dreaming the way that you do, believing the way that you do, Natalie has played such a massive role in this story. Once again, maybe not everyone understands just to the level of her commitment and her support. And really, I think her discernment, yeah. her wisdom, yeah. her discipline, she's up here bragging on you, but um, I, I know this woman and yeah. I, I know her relationship with the Lord. Maybe just talk about that from, from your angle because this book is going to people, but there's been people that have helped bring this message out of you. Well, again, community is more important than anything you have in your life. If you're a part of Voo Church and you're not in a Voo crew, shame on you. <laughs> now, he won't ever say that. But you, you'll never actually get it until you get planted in the right soil. If we put a seed on this table, it's not going to produce anything. Mm. But it can, it can accidentally fall in some dirt. Mm. And it's going to produce. When I talked to my wife, and I, I, the conference we were at when I met you, the only reason I was there is because I woke her up at 2 a.m. after watching Elevation's documentary, called How We Change the World at two in the morning was so inspired. And I said, we're going to Elevation Church and we're going to this C3 conference that they talked about going to. I get to, I, and then make her watch it with me at 2 a.m. Really? I <laughs> he watched it. I mean, my faith is stirring. because watched there was, it like five times, every I watched night it, for like, like a month. I just watched it every, because yeah. faith was being stirred up in me, like that a group of people could just get together and get a word from God and they could change the world and be in an arena. And I'm seeing them rent out an arena five years into ministry, not knowing we would buy one five years into ministry. But I didn't know that. My faith was just stirring. We get there the next day to work, and I was like, well, let me ask my, because I was just a, a, an associate pastor at our church at the time, and I said, let me look up when this conference is. It was the next day. We had no money. I asked the senior pastor, I said, uh, is it okay if me and a couple of the people go down here? He said, we ain't got no money for you to go down there. And I said, what if we can make a way? I had Bree, she's sitting here right with me right now. I had her literally call and ask if they would scholarship four of us to go. And on the website, it said no scholarships. Like it literally said no scholarship. And I said, call anyway. And some of y'all need to get that gangster. Yeah. yeah. Call anyway. No scholarship. No, it literally said no scholarship. <laughs> That's extra. You don't need to put that on the website. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, they, people probably asked before, but, but we were the exception. I called one of our friends that live in Dallas that I hadn't talked to. You know how your parents have friends, but they know you from like events, but you don't really know them. I was desperate. I knew I was supposed to be there. So I called her like, hey, Auntie Renee. She ain't my real auntie, but you know what I'm saying? You just throw that on there to make it feel better. I was like, can me and four random people come stay in your house? She said, yes. We got a rental car. We go up there. I meet you. Years later, we're sitting here doing this. Mm. Now, I, I say all of that to say that when I woke her up, she could have poisoned mm. my faith or propelled it. Mm. And my question to you is the people that you call besties, friends, yep. are yep. they telling you why it can't work and it doesn't take all of that and this is too much? Or she didn't come with no prophetic word or encouragement or God showed me this. She just sat there and watched it with me. It wasn't, oh, I see it. It was, oh, I'm here. Mm. 
And many times the greatest crazy faith step you can do is have presence with somebody. Mm. Not, not predict the future or make something happen, just be present right. with them. And she was present with me. When I wrote down that thing and I told her that we would go on the Spirit Bank Event Center, she said, she said, oh. <laughs> like that was, that, that was her response. It was like, oh. I might have said more than that. No, but you said, you know, oh. But she probably right. But she didn't poison it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And because she didn't poison it, it had the opportunity to grow. Mm. And had the opportunity for me to come back and say, well, what do you think? Well, they said it. She was like, well, what did God say? And there would be times she would strategically be the only one that'd be like, well, baby, don't give up now. Ain't nothing like your woman telling you don't give up. You'd be like, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Go again. Do it one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. Yes. Like, like. And that's happened over and over and over again. And this is the one thing that I want to encourage people. Crazy faith looks different because of your personality. Yeah. You can have crazy faith and not be jumping around the stage and loud and saying, I got the keys, the keys, the keys. That's just me. Yeah, good. I would be doing that if we had a good taco. Like, yeah. I'd be like, this taco is the fuck. Like, that's, that's just me. Yeah. But crazy faith in your personality, yep. your packaging, and your demeanor is still crazy. You might just be able to, God did it. And that's the as same thing as me saying, I got the keys, the keys, the keys. It doesn't have to match velocity. Very good. Me and her crazy faith don't match the same velocity. Very good. But it matches in the value we put on it. Mm. So... I have, I have no doubt in my mind that God gave me my greatest gift at 15 by letting me meet her mm. because he saw my purpose yep. and my future yeah. and he knew that I would, I would need somebody that would propel me and not poison me. Mm. And because of that, what God has been able to do in our lives and how many people we get to help and how many people we get to propel their visions and do that other stuff. I mean, all glory to God. And then he just made her fine. And so I just want to thank God right now. I put my hands in the holes in your jeans, girl. I love you. Please ask another question, Rich. Please. <laughs> I'm just okay. I'm just letting him swing all night. I like it. Um, in a moment, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pray for this project because once again, if you are just tuning in, if you're watching on YouTube at Transformation or at VU, uh, today really has uh, a massive point, which is this is a book that Mike has written that. I don't believe it's supposed to be just talked about for a week or two weeks. I really think this is a book that's gonna shift a generation, that as you read this book, something's gonna be unlocked. I don't want just you to read it. I want you to get it into other people's hands. So we're gonna actually, we're actually gonna pray for it here in a moment. But before we do, maybe just, Mike, just what is your crazy faith for the Crazy Faith book? Because I think we need to speak it out a little bit tonight. What are you hoping, what are you believing and hoping that God's gonna do through this book and why is it important that people do get it? Because all night you've just been ministering and talking, but we haven't, I want you to, what do you want to have, have, have happen with this? All right. Now, it's vulnerable because I'm sharing this stuff that God shows me in the dark with a, with a bunch of people. Talk about it. And, um, but I believe it. What I want for this book, number one, is it to change our generation to believe in God again. Mm. Now, and I don't say that just in a cliche way. Right now, our generation has more faith in Google than God. We will, we will research. We will find facts. We will find graphs. We will find all of this stuff to help inform us on a decision. But if God told us to do it and it goes against everything that the statistics say, Many times he could come in a, he could visit us face to face and we would still be pointing at fact sheets. This can't work in Tulsa. This can't work with us. 
This can't happen. And I just want people to know, I just ask God, would you just make me a billboard to just prove that you can do everything that people say is impossible? Just so our generation would believe again. The Bible says when the Son of Man returns to the earth, Come on. will he find faith? Not will he find churches, not will he find amazing right. merch, not will he find, it says, will he find faith? And then another scripture says, when all of this is over, there's only going to be three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. He said, every Instagram live, every celebrity that we love, every big thing, the only three things that are going to remain. And the first one that he says is faith. And I just feel like our generation has lost its hope. And hope is the fuel for faith. Mm. Hope is free. Right now, you could use your imagination on everybody's seat in the building. And hopefully we can get a manufacturer that I can get it to everybody on YouTube and everything. But everybody get your blindfold out right now. If you got the blindfold, the crazy faith blindfold, some of y'all done put it on your head. You done got your head wrapped. You putting your weave down. I see you. I see you. <laughs> but, but what I want you to do is put it over your eyes real quick. Mm. Put, just put it over your eyes. And, and the reason I want everybody to do this is because this is how you practice faith. Mm. So good. And comfort. See yourself celebrating others when they win. See yourself walking into the home that you own and that you host groups in. See yourself right now. If you're at home and you're watching this, close your eyes right Amen. now. This is where vision begins. Not by my current situation and the people who left me and the situations that have me scarred, but right now, see Vu Church Rich in the auditorium that you desire with as many seats as it can hold. See cancer drying up off of that family member. See you rejoicing at your wedding. See, no, 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 you can see it's okay to hope. It's okay to believe. It's okay to think that God has a bigger plan for you than what you've experienced. My Bible says eyes haven't seen. Come on. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man. The things that God has planned and prepared for you. See it before you see it. Right now I feel like God is dropping visions in people's hearts yes. and minds right now. See yourself. See yourself actually standing up on that platform. And telling your real testimony. Not the fake one. Not the PG ver version. See your family. Being able to be a blessing for generations to come. See yourself being the father you didn't have. See yourself being the mother you wish you would have had. Yes, Lord. See yourself serving. See your child healed. See God using you for his glory. If we can hope again, what if it takes faith? I want to see a generation yes. of people rise up and believe God for the impossible, the improbable. Come on. The thing that culture says could never happen. Mm. And Rich, I believe as we stand here in this moment, this is a holy moment. Yes, Lord. Because God's giving people back visions again. Ugh. Stuff that you stopped thinking of. Because you were so traumatized by what didn't happen. God's giving you a dream again. He's giving you a vision. Don't think where you are is it. Because before you were planted in your mother's womb, God knew you. Yes, Lord. And he had a plan for you to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a hope and an amazing future. And today with all of us looking crazy with blindfolds on our eyes. Yeah. May this be a prophetic sign of how we will walk by faith. Yes. Lord. And not by sight. We will walk by faith and not 
by sight. Say it with me. We will walk by faith and not by sight. One more time. We will walk by faith and not by sight. May it never be said of our generation that we had to have all of the facts as long as we had the faith. Come on. And remember, it's only crazy until it happens. If you believe the visions that God is showing you is coming to pass, will you give God one huge shout? Oh, you better act like you know that we serve a God that can do the impossible. And then, oh, I feel God right now. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. DJ Richie Rich didn't even say I could do this, but I'm I'm, going to do this. We're extending this to this Sunday. I'm preaching at VU Church all weekend. I'm preaching to Transformation Church because we're just getting started. I need you to tell everybody. I'm coming. I'm doing the morning and the night. I'm about to, I'm about to act the fool up here. Because faith is stirred. I feel faith rising in people. And my practical hope for this book is that we prove the world wrong. Amen. I've been in back rooms with publishers. Come on. And, and, and people who are like, yeah, Pastor Mike, don't, uh, we're not really going to stock Target or Walmart with your book because, you know, your people don't really support messages like this. We understand how they did relationship goals because it had to do with relationships, but your people. And they kept calling your people, and I was almost, I almost said something that, um, he said, but they, they won't do it. And I said, watch them. Come on. I said, I bet there's a rowdy group of people that ain't just gonna buy one book that they gonna go in there and they gonna see how many you got. And they know that when they start sowing these seeds into other people of crazy faith, there's gonna be an eruption. And last night I was on an Instagram live and I said, I I said, I don't know, I feel this knuck if you buck anointing. You know what I'm saying? Knuck if you buck. So I. Whoa, go buy the book. Yeah, knock if you book. Yeah, go buy the book. Like, and literally today. He had Rich, his I, shirt off. I, I did point. take my shirt off on the Instagram live. I'm sorry. I'm blessing. crazy. Blessing. He said it's a blessing. Um, but I had people today in Targets, Walmarts, Barnes and Nobles, Mardales all over the country playing knock if you buck in Mardales and picking up the whole stack of books to give as Christmas presents and birthday presents and to be able to stand. And so for me, not for me, but for when you do your book and for when DC does her book and for when we have messages that will actually impact people's life, I want want them to know that the kingdom of God is nothing to be played with. If we get our mind around something, we're gonna make it happen. And so, um, I think we want to, we just want to go crazy. I I just pray that it impacts people in the way that it's impacted me. And I'm grateful for this moment, this time. Vu Church, Transformation Nation, I love y'all. Crazy Faith is not a message that I got from God. It's a message that I've lived out. And And today is the release of me putting out the first version of coaching people into your own crazy faith journey. This was not so that it could just happen for me. Anytime God does something for an organization, he's trying to show a picture of what he wants to do for the organism. Amen. And this is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, can we thank Pastor Mike and Natalie Todd? Give them a big round of applause. Before you go, I think that we should just do something. And Natalie, I think you should stay with us as well. I'm going to ask my wife, Don Cherie, <laughs> Pastor Charles, Pastor Manushka. I don't know if Coda's around here. I saw Pastor Bianca is in the house. I'm going to get her up on the stage. I just think it would be fitting tonight 
if there's any other transformation team or any of our pastoral team that's in here, just want to stand up here tonight for a moment, uh, just as a picture of unity. We love Pastor Bianca. How are you? You look beautiful. This is the coolest outfit ever, by the way. That's awesome. People just looking sharp. Yeah. I just thought tonight um, that we would just take a moment and, um, and just pray for this project. Like, I, I think that Mike and Natalie have poured out so much and mean so much. You know, tonight, like, we didn't even really promote none of this. I ain't, this was very, very little promotion. And people been here since 6 p.m., driving all over the place. It's not because of hype. It's because this man and this woman, they pour out their lives week in and week out. And people are here tonight celebrating. And I just thought that we should pray that this book would go from the east to the west, to the north to the south, that we would just begin starting tonight to start to hear the testimonies of people operating in crazy faith and that we would hear miracles, uh, I think decades from now, of people adopting this. And so I thought since we're in God's house, those of you on YouTube, uh, in the comments right now, would you just begin to pray with us? And I just thought maybe a couple of us would pray. Maybe Charles, you would pray. Uh, I think maybe uh, Mana, you'll pray. And then don't you, why don't you just close us in prayer tonight that we would just ask that God would bless this project. And you there in the audience and right now online, come on, can we lift our voice? Let's begin to intercede right now. This is not a book. We believe that this is a word for a generation. Come on, Pastor Charles. Lord God, we come to you right now, Lord yes. Jesus, and we are thanking, Lord God, God for your you, God, children, for your Lord God, yes. your service, pastors Michael and Natalie Todd. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that what you have done in their life, Lord Jesus, Lord, this is just the beginning. Yes. Holy Spirit, I thank you. That, Lord God, this they're not doing things right now to impress people, Lord God, but I thank you for a supernatural impartation, Lord God. Lord, that the things that you've done in their marriage, Lord God, the yes. things that you've done in their family, Lord Jesus, that you would begin, Lord God, to continue you to flourish every dream every promise lord god but we pray a hedge of protection around this family lord god that their children will grow up and call them blessed lord jesus yes. that the crazy faith uh lord idea would not stop with michael and natalie todd but would continue with bella and ava and michael alexander jr lord god and gia lord god i thank you that this is a generation lord god marked by your word and your faith, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you would continue to see this vision move forward through this family, Lord God. Yes. And that this book, Lord God, would go to every edge of the earth. We thank you for it, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for what you're even doing, God, that the things that are happening in this room, God, that are reverberating across the world, yeah. Jesus, that even in this space, Lord God, that you're moving. And we pray right now for everything that you've put down on the inside of them would be released, God, that they would, Lord God, pour out, Lord God, everything that you've put down on the inside of them, yeah. that nothing would be wasted, God, that there would be no wasted blessing, there would be no wasted year. Come God, on. we pray that you would restore, God, that you would renew every year that the locusts yes. have stolen God, that you would restore everything Lord God, every dream Lord God would come out Lord God, every vision would come out, everything would be released God, there is nothing that will be left Lord God on the earth, God every single thing, every yes. blessing God every dream Lord God that it would be released, that it would bless people that it would bless nations, Lord God that people would be moved in a way that they have never thought, God that they would bless generations God in a way Lord God that we have never seen and we're believing it right now that this would be a generation that would walk in faith that this would be a generation that would walk in favor that we would not hold our heads down but God that we would walk with our heads up knowing Lord God that there is something that you put down on the inside of us and we will not let the enemy kill our dreams we will not let the enemy ki kill our vision we will not let the enemy kill our strategy so right now God as people would read this book that you would begin to download things to them in the spirit God that they would begin to see things God, that they would begin to have things revealed to them, God, things that they could yes. never imagine. We pray right now, God, for the testimonies, for the stories, Jesus, for the legacies, God, every seed that is sown will be a harvest for someone else, and we believe it right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Lord, right now we just pray that the pages of this book, Lord, would point people to their identity yes. in you. God, we pray that as they read the pages of this book, Lord, in their home, in the workplace, God, to their families, out loud in their marriages, 
God, that it would be a marker on their faith journey. God, that they would look back and say, we were never the same Come again. On. That God, you established something permanent in our lives, God. As we read the testimony of the Todds, God, as we read of their journey of faith, Lord, it ignited, God, the faith that we needed to walk out our individual faith journey. God, I just pray for the people watching yes. right now or listening. God, I pray that they would awaken Hallelujah. to the warrior that you have placed within them. Them. God, that they wouldn't shrink back from the call of God on their life, but God, they would catch, Lord, the vision that you revealed to Mike and Natalie years ago, that they are sons yes. and daughters of Almighty God, and there is nothing that is impossible, Lord, when you are leading and guiding. God, I pray that this book would go around the globe, Lord, that it would yes. equip and empower the saints, God, to Breathe step on, into God. their calling. God, I pray that it would absolutely defy every word that the world has spoken against it. God, you are working, you are moving, and all of Ook Church and Transformation said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on tonight. If you find yourself in a waiting season, if you find yourself in a valley tonight, lift your hands towards heaven. God, tonight we release crazy faith in this room. We release crazy faith, Lord, all throughout YouTube right now. Anybody watching right now? God, anybody who's waiting, anybody who's lingering right now? God, we pray that you give them perseverance, Lord. Yes. That you give them patience, Lord. Not to give up, not yes. to quit, but to lean in tonight, lean Lord. In. We're believing that you are the God, Lord, yes. who can do exceedingly, immeasurably, more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. That's right. So tonight, Lord, we open up spiritual eyes. God, give us a new vision, God. Help us to see what others cannot see. Yes, God, I pray for new endurance, God. I pray for faithfulness, Jesus. Release it tonight in this room. Release it tonight in this room. Come on, with your hands lifted up. Come on, lift your voice all over this place. Come on, let's begin to press in. Come on, let's sing it out. <laughs> 